Okay, I think it's time to get started. go back and forth unfortunately for those of you filming I got to move because I got to come back over there's no uh, the clicker doesn't work either so that's all right we'll make do we'll make it work um, so uh, my name is Anthony Miyazaki and uh, you see what I'm going to talk about right here uh, double triple and quadruple dipping with our online content so um, without uh, further ado let's get started so before I start though I want to ask a few questions and uh, I want to Ask the question, who am I? Who are you? Why are you here? I'm really curious about that. Why am I here? Um, and then what are we going to do about it? OK, so I'm going to start off with who am I, and I'm going to add in why should you care, all right? So on paper, OK, on paper, I'm the chairperson of the Department of Marketing here at FIU, all right? I'm a tenured full professor. Ooh. <laughs> There we go, right, yeah, for what that's worth, right? That means I can pretty much do anything up here and I won't get fired. That's good. <laughs> All right. I'm also the director of the Master of Science and Marketing program. I'm kind of proud about that one. That's a, here's like an unapologetic plug. Oh, yeah, so we do digital marketing, brand development, and marketing analytics, and that's what we're about. But you're not really our audience because you're an audience that actually doesn't really care as much about getting master's degrees. You just want a lot of good information, right? So, so let me move on. But really, who am I? Those are the titles. I'm not really a big title person, and I'll tell you a little bit more about, about that in a minute. Um, first of all, I'm an entrepreneurial marketer. So even though I'm here um, in a state institution, in a very regulated environment that frustrates me incredibly, I'm still an entrepreneurial marketer, and I like to build things. I like to build things, and I like to sell them. And that makes me an entrepreneur. I'm also a control freak. I'm sorry, sorry. I'm a process control freak. Sorry, it's not a control freak. I'm a process control freak. And what that means is that I like to make things work. What I found over time is that I can work on clients that control the outcome of something, but the problem is if I fix that outcome, the next time I have to come back and fix the outcome again. And I have to fix it again and again. So what I found is if I can fix the process, that outweighs the fixing the outcome any day. And it makes for an easier life. It means now I have a process that works, and now I can use that process over and over again, and that's good for all of us. The last thing is I'm what I call a productivity evangelist. I do this to my students all the time. I like to get more output for the input that I put in. I like more revenue for the expense that I incurred. In other words, I like getting a positive return on my investment. And that's very important to me. Now, it's great to be at a place like WordCamp because, hey, for your 35 bucks, you get a lot more than what you put in, right? Well, like I mentioned earlier, I'm not a big fan of titles. I don't really care about them so much. I've read enough resumes in my day to see that when someone says that they've had this position or whatever else, it doesn't really impress me anymore. And maybe it's because a lot of times I'd read resumes of people who I already knew. And I'd say, yeah, you're not that good, right? Because I, I know what that person actually does. So what I seem to care more about now is I care about what people actually do, and I care about what achievements they've had. So with that, in, uh, as an example, I want to use this Master of Science in Marketing. So not to sell it to you, but just as an example, what we did with it. Um, here at FIU, because we're a state institution, it takes a very long time for us to be able to actually get a, a program approved by the state. So on the order of about two and a half to three years. Okay, that really hurts things like innovation. But 
What we were able to do, though, is during the time we were waiting to be actually to get this innovation actually approved by the state, we didn't just slack off and wait. We started to build up a, a, a program of social media and online content to prepare ourselves for when the day came that we'd be approved. Well, we got approved in late October of this past year, but they didn't tell us we were approved until early November. Is when I wrote an email and said, hey, when are you going to approve us? And they go, oh, we forgot to tell you you're already approved. <laughs> um, almost, almost two weeks earlier. Well, the problem for us was we were actually going to start a new class, start a cohort in January of 2016. I had less than two months to fill up an entire cohort of a program that cost $27,500. And I couldn't advertise or talk about it or anything beforehand because you can't do that according to the state rules until you actually have approval. Well, I told my fellow chairs, well, I said, well, you know what, we're going to do this. And they kind of laughed and snickered and was like, <laughs> good luck. Right, and they really thought it was funny that we were actually going to try and attempt to have a, a class starting in January. Well, in January, we just started the largest new master level class, uh, inaugural class ever in college and business with 43 students. And that's awesome. And so you think, wow, how'd they do that? They must have spent a lot of money on advertising. Well, actually, they asked us to advertise, and I didn't want to advertise. Not because I don't like advertising, I just don't like wasting money on advertising that doesn't work. And how did we do it? We did it actually through our social media connections. And we did that by making sure we had efficient delivery of effective content. And so, in case you want to tweet this out again, successful marketing comes from having efficient delivery of successful content. So what we're talking about here is we're going to talk about content, but we're not just talking about developing content like in some of the other sessions. But we're talking about the idea of being a little bit more efficient in how we develop that content, right? And we'll talk about that as we move along. But first, I want to know who are you? So I have a couple questions for you. First of all, who here is an entrepreneur? Just by show of hands, we get an idea. A lot of entrepreneurs. That's good. That's good. Um, who here is a media person? We got some of those. Okay, that's good. Um, who here is a marketer? All right, awesome. Good. For those of you who did not raise your hand. For all three of those, for you lying to me, or you don't know who you are, right? So let me explain this. If you like to make things better, if you like to make yourself better by coming to work camp, if you like to actually, you heard yourself said for the recording, it's on the microphone. I need to use the microphone yeah. for recording. Yeah, it's on the recording. I can get your hand help. That'd be great. <laughs> I, th I thought I was done. I thought, you are out of here. Okay. That's all right. I'll, I'll be stuck here anyway. So until he comes back, I will use this. Now, now I can whisper. This is kind of nice. So anybody, everybody, this is kind of my cool radio voice. Um, I, I don't have a radio voice. Okay, so, um, so as far as an entrepreneur, if you're here, if you're trying to make yourself better, if you're trying to make things better, whether you work for yourself or you work for someone else, if you're trying to make something better, that means then that you're an entrepreneur, which means we all are entrepreneurs. As far as media people, anyone have one of these smartphones maybe or a, maybe a laptop or an uh, iPad or something else like that? And you ever go on there and try to get content out or something? Yeah, I thought so. Well, that means that uh, we are all media people. And you know where this is going, right? So if you've ever tried to convince somebody of something, you ever try to sway people into your perspective, you ever try to let people know that you want to make money off of them or something like that or convince your boss to pay you more money, well, guess what? That means you're a marketer, which means we are all marketers. Right? So, we're all entrepreneurs, we're all media people, we're all marketers, which means now I know who you are, but now I need to know why are you here, right? Well, I'm not, you know, by any means thinking that you're here to see me. I'm, I'm guessing the other sessions were full, right? <laughs> or you couldn't find your way there because of the blinding sun or something, and so, um, so you just happen to land here. That's fine with me. But what I really think is, I think you're here because you want to learn, you want to grow, 
right? You want to develop yourself. You want to improve yourself. And I think more than anything, you want to share because you're here about a content session, which means you want to build content. And I guess you want to build content because you want to share that content. Well, that means then you want to share not just your knowledge and your experience and your wisdom that you have, but my guess is, if it's, even if you don't know this, you want to share your story. So why am I here? I'm here to help you. And I'm here to help you pretty much to do all those things. I'm here to help you to share and express, to be able to, to teach others and inform them what you're doing. But more than anything, what I really want to do is I want to help you to connect. And I want to help you connect with that content that you make and help you connect on multiple platforms. In other words, multiple channels. Um, and, and that's what we're going to do today. So what are we going to do about it? Here's what we're going to do. First, we'll talk about a problem. Then I'm going to tell you a story. And then finally, we're going to talk about a solution. Let's start with the problem. Oh, I want to walk. I can't carry this with me, can I? I'll walk a little bit. <laughs> now I know what it's like to be in prison. OK, in that little cell. OK, so uh, this is kind of a weird mic. So the problem that we have really is that, that when we're looking at content and content development is in the old days for, I see some people here who might remember this, but back in the really old days, like when we first had the internet and all that, all we had were web pages and it was so nice because all we had to do was just say, hey, let's put some stuff on the web page. Okay, let's do it. And that was it and we were done. And then all of a sudden that whole social media thing happened, right? And then not only did we have our web page and our blogs, but we had, we had Twitter and YouTube and everything else out there. You saved me, thanks. Hello. Oh, this is good. I, I want to like belt in the song now. Um, <laughs> but I won't, because then you'll really leave. All right, so, so with all of those other, what I'll call platforms here, and I know we don't all call it the same thing, but with those other platforms, those other uh, channels that we can actually display our, our content or, or, or convey our content, with that became some problems. And the problem we had was that, the big problem that we had is that we really didn't have time because really content development, good content development really does take time. And that's been one of the issues that we've had ever since that time. And it gets worse and worse and worse. Because whether right now you're thinking, well, should I go ahead and, uh, and, and get Periscope and, and Meerkat? Or maybe I should blab it out now. And it's like, and, and every week we have, seems like we have something new. I saw something recently where they said there were 52 different ways that we could you know, share our content. Well, 52 is a, is a, lot, a, lot, of, uh, a lot of different ways. Well, so what happens then is people develop what they call solutions. But they're not really solutions. They're more like reactions. And I call them sad reactions. Don't, don't cry here, OK? Because um, we'll have a solution at the very end. But one of the, the sad reactions is that people end up focusing or end up working with fewer platforms than they want. They want to work on four or five or six different platforms, but they can't. And so they limit themselves to just that one or two. And they're told by people, hey, look, you can only do one or two well, so don't even bother with the other ones. And that's kind of sad. Um, the other thing is, that they have massive mediocrity. They go ahead and they do the five or six or seven, but because they're not really posting as much as they should or not sharing as much as they should or they don't do it the right way, they end up being fairly mediocre in what they do. Another thing is people either co copy and paste or they do what I call senseless sharing. So the copy and paste is when we just say, you know what, I did it for this platform, I'll just copy that same thing over here to somewhere else. So even if I have like a 15 second video on Instagram, I'll just copy that same 15 seconds over to Twitter, over to YouTube, over to Facebook or anywhere else. Or we do the senseless sharing, which means that we just put it all in one space and then we share it out like news to everybody else. Like, like the people on Twitter, when they're on Twitter, really want to go to your Facebook page. They don't. And they don't want to go to your web page or anything else. They're on Twitter because that's where they wanted to be initially. And they'd like to go to Twitter be on Twitter, and then get off of Twitter and be happy with themselves. And so it doesn't really work. And then the other thing that people do is they spend too much time repurposing. Now, we hear this word all the time. You have to repurpose your material for somewhere else. The problem is that repurposing actually takes a lot of time. Repurposing is when we actually develop content for one particular platform or one channel, and then we take that content and we wrangle it and we twist it and we, we conform it into some other channel. 
And sometimes it takes so much time to do that that we actually instead could go ahead and create brand new content. So, sometimes I feel like repurposing is like trying to build a bicycle out of a car or vice versa. It's like you take this car, you pull parts of, parts of it apart, and then you say, you know what, I really need to buy, build a bike out of this. But it doesn't really work. And the reason why it doesn't work is because you never planned ahead, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Story time. <sighs> so, um, you know, when I was a kid, I'll stand up so you can actually see me. Um, it was nice to take the shoes off for a minute, though. So when I was a, when I was a kid, um, we used to have chips every now and then, and, um, but we didn't have chips and dip very often. So mostly it was just chips. So whenever we had dip, whether it was you know, ranch dip or bacon dip or maybe guacamole dip, whenever we had that, it was kind of a treat. I mean, we were little kids. And when we had that treat, We'd be sitting around there, and I have, there's five of us, five little, you know, five kids in my family. And so we're sitting around, we're eating our, our you know, our, our chips, and we're dipping in there, and we eat our stuff. Well, every now and then, someone would, they'd take a little bite, and they'd go back in for more dip. And all of a sudden, the rest of us would start screaming, hey, 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 no double dipping, right? No double dipping. And it wasn't because we were afraid of germs. I don't think we even knew what germs were back then. But what we felt was, it was unfair you have your allocated number of chips, and that gets you an allocated amount of dip. And that's it. And you shouldn't have any more dip. You take your chip, you dip, you eat, you're done. If you have chip left over, then you have to eat it dry, okay? <laughs> that's how it works, and nothing more. So that's my story. <laughs> so let's move on and talk about some solutions. With online content, double, triple, or quadruple, or quintuple, I didn't have any more space, um, dipping is not wrong. It's not wrong at all. People tend to try to tell us that it is. They say, you know, you really shouldn't use that for the other, other medium over there. That's not right. It's not right to do that. Well, you know what? It's perfectly fine to do that. And there's ways to do it as long as you do it the right way. The other thing I want to get across is that double dipping is not the same thing as repurposing. The reason why is because repurposing really is taking something that was designed for one platform or one channel and then moving that over and trying to change it in. It's like that car example, right? You don't build a bicycle out of a car. What you have to do is you have to plan ahead. And so double dipping really requires planning. So let's go back and think about the, the chip example. If you were going to double dip your chip, what you would do is you'd think ahead. You would say, well, you know what I'm going to do is I'll dip a little bit on that chip. I'll take a little bite. Then I'll go back and dip a little bit more. And if you're really good, it's like skipping a rock, right? You can get, you know, maybe three or four dips out of that one chip. And that's really good. It's especially good if you're down to the bottom of your chips and you have a lot of dip left because you really don't feel right just scooping it out with a spoon, right? That just doesn't seem right. And so from that perspective then, the same thing happens with, so, with, with social media and online content, is we have to plan ahead so that we can actually go back in there and double dip. In fact, if we don't plan ahead with our online and social media content, then your attempts to actually double dip might get sticky. And this is where you've taken a little dip with your chip, you've bitten off too much and all you have is crumbs, and you're like, well, all right. And you scoop right in there, and now you have chips or have dip all over your fingers. And we don't want that to happen, especially with your online content. So when that happens, people don't like you anymore, whether it's dipping the chip or it's double dipping. And the reason they don't like you is because it doesn't work very well to do it this way. So let's talk then about this idea of double, triple, and quadruple dipping. I have till four, right? Plenty of time. First of all, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna put two things up here. I'm gonna put both up at the same time because it's one of those weird things that might mess with your mind or something like that, and that's good because it'll distract you for a while. So first of all, the first concept is I want you to consider your ideas with your platform in mind. When you first start thinking about what it is you wanna do, what it is you wanna write, what it is you wanna express, 
then think about the platforms. And don't just think about the one platform that you know, but think about the other platforms that you might be able to use. I mean, right now, there are many platforms where you can share your information, where you can share that story, where you can start to express yourself. Well, the other thing is, and honestly, maybe it's really the same thing just written around in some weird kind of Yoda way, um, but consider your platforms as you to develop the ideas. And the truth is, I wrote it one way, I wrote it the other way, and I couldn't decide which one I liked most. But I thought, maybe one will actually stick with someone more than the other one. Because well, the other one I considered the idea that I'm considering my platforms as I'm developing my ideas. So I may have thought ahead of a platform, but as I'm even developing the idea, I start thinking, hold on a second. I think there's a little piece of this that I could use somewhere else. Well, there's a couple things we can do when we're trying to think about ways to double dip. Now, there's two things. We can think about the similar communication modes or when things are very different. So with similar communication modes, let's think of the example of video. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a quick example here of three videos. And what we did is we're doing a thing with um, some of the students are doing something right now where they're doing a fundraiser. And to get the fundraiser to go, what they do is they challenge their professor to come in and actually do some type of a physical fitness activity. So for whatever reason, they keep on having them whip and nay nay. Okay? And if you don't know what that is, that's probably good, but you may find out in just a second. So, so, so let me just go ahead and do this. Hopefully we have a little bit of sound with this as well, and you can take a look at it. So the first, what happened was, before we did this, we knew ahead of time that we wanted to make sure we had a 15 second clip for, for Instagram, something under 30 seconds for Twitter so we could go ahead and embed it, and then, and then also we wanted to make sure we had something that was maybe under a minute or so to put onto Facebook and YouTube. But had we not planned ahead, what would have happened would have been we would have had a bunch of material out there and we would have thought, ah, you know what, can we take that or that? And it would have taken a long time to go back in there and take care of it. So in a very short time, we were able to just say, you know what, we're kind of planning ahead here. Let's see what we can find out of it. Hopefully we get a little bit of sound here. We're the students at FIU Sports Marketing and Sponsorship class, and we're here to donate to the Claire's Place Foundation to challenge Professor Allen to give breath of fitness challenge. Okay, 15 seconds, very quick, to the point, we're done. The good thing is we still knew we had a lot more because we planned ahead. Well, then we have one here. This is our one for um, We're the students at FIU Sports Marketing and Sponsorship class, and we're here to donate to the Claire's Place Foundation to challenge Professor Allen to give Breath of Fitness challenge. And we'll just keep on going there. Well, maybe we can... Okay. There we go. <laughs> So I want my students to challenge a professor. So hey, tell them who y'all want, who y'all want. G G and for those that don't know, that's Greg Maloney. You on the clock. Okay. So then he comes back. And then we actually have another version here um, where he basically goes and he does, we have a little bit more. So we get a little bit more dancing, we get a little bit more time, a little bit more time with him talking with the students and a little bit more involvement. Now, the truth is, it doesn't really matter to us if someone watches one or the other. And we know that we're going to have one audience that just wants it really quick. If you're on Instagram, you want it quick. What we're not going to do is we're not going to go to Instagram and say, oh, you're here on Instagram. Would you go over and watch our YouTube video? We're not going to do that because they don't want to move. They don't want to go over somewhere else. Um, the same thing happens on Twitter. They don't necessarily want to click through and go to something else. In this way, and this is a simple way. This is simple because they're all the same type of media, right? It's all video, all shot at the same time. Well, what about when we have times when we're going across communication modes? So this might be something like, for example, um, <clears throat> we shoot video sometimes for some of our classes, and what we'll do is I'll have the professors put this online. I'll say, you know what, this is great material, put it online, put it on YouTube, wherever it's going to be. Um, but before you shoot this, what I'd like you to do is, I'd like you to write that script so that that script could also be a LinkedIn Pulse article at the same time. Not necessarily exactly the same words, but something pretty similar. So maybe when you're doing your video, you use some contractions, you say gonna instead of going to, whatever it happens to be. And then of course, when you write up the script for your, when you write it for the LinkedIn article, then you're gonna maybe be a little bit more formal perhaps. But the idea is, why go back out there and say, you know what, I really like that video that I did. I really should write a LinkedIn article about that. And now you're repurposing. 
because you never thought ahead to that point, and now what's gonna happen is you're gonna take the time to go back through and try to pull the ideas off of the video. Maybe you know you scripted, maybe it's not scripted, and then you're gonna take a long time to try to do that, and eventually what's gonna happen is you just won't do it. You know, or you'll do a really bad job. Or someone will say, well, I'll just take the script that I had for the video, and I'll just, uh, I'll just put that out there on LinkedIn, and that'll work. But it's not gonna work well, because it wasn't made with both purposes in mind. It's not to say that they're always gonna match exactly, but the idea is if you're thinking about it, that will work. Another thing is that you wanna be inspired by interactions. I feel like a lot of times when I'm starting to think of things that I might wanna put out as far as content, they come when I'm actually responding to someone who has reached out to me on Twitter or who's reached out to me on Snapchat or something else. And so what happens is a lot of times when I'm actually formulating the response to them, I just think, wow, that's like brilliant, which I'm sure you think about your content as well. And so the idea though is at that particular time, I'm thinking I'm responding to someone, I'm having that interaction why don't I take that moment to expound a little bit further with what I'm doing and I can use what I'm doing now to go ahead and create additional content. In other words, why should I separate everything that I'm doing? Content creation, if you're writing for um, a script, if you're writing for an article or a blog, if you're writing to respond to somebody in a comment that they made on your blog or in an email, all of it's content creation. Every time you're talking to someone, you're creating content and it's content that shares your story. So the idea really is for us to go back through there and think about how we can be inspired by these interactions and think about how the interaction at that moment can help us to create something else. Maybe what you say in your interaction, in fact, um, if you've ever had someone comment to you or, 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 or reach out to you on Twitter, when you respond on Twitter, don't just respond, make sure that your response to them is a fully functional standalone tweet. If they say, so what do you think about this? Don't just say, I like it. No, what a waste. What you should do is say, well, what I think about ABC is XYZ because of something else. And now you've answered their question, but you've also made sure that you have something now that's retweetable because it stands on its own. And it's just a matter of planning ahead. Now, what you could do is you could respond to them and then you could look back and go, wow, that was brilliant. And now what you're gonna do is you're gonna go, I really should write a tweet about that. But the problem is now you've already done it once and it doesn't really matter to go back and try to do it again. The other thing is you need to plan small content into big content. Now when we have professors that will do a, um, uh, a video for their class or a video for anything else and they go online, we make sure we tell them we want to make sure that you have something that we call a quotable moment. That, um, that when you're trying to, uh, to talk about something, we want to make sure that at some point we can look at your video and take that 10 second or 15 second or whether it's 20 seconds, whatever it is, and take that clip out and share that clip on social media. But if you don't plan ahead, what's going to happen is going to be that you're going to go ahead and um, you'll say, well, I have this one little portion of what I said that I liked and could you skip that other part and then pretend like I finished the sentence with these other words? And it doesn't really work out that well. And the same thing with we're writing. If you write something, when you're writing something for your blog or whatever else, you guys know what pull quotes are, right? You do a pull quote. You make sure you look and think, you don't write it, and then after you write it, go, I wonder which thing I said here I could pull out as a quote. No. What you do is you start off with the idea of, as I'm writing, you go through and you revise, and as you're revising, you say, you know, I really don't feel like I have very many quotable moments in here. Maybe I don't have any at all. So now what I'll do is you go back in and I do this with the scripts that the professors will give me. I'll say, hold on a second, let me take a look. I don't see any quotable moments. Let's change the script. Let's change what you're writing to make sure you have a quotable moment. At that point, now I can take that quotable moment, I can send it out on a, I can put it onto a background, send it out onto Instagram, I can put it onto Twitter, I can make sure if it's video, if it's recorded, I can go ahead and have that recording and take out that little segment. In fact, um, let me uh, give you a little example here. Sorry, I have a really big passcode code on here, obviously. I'm not sure what I'm trying to hide. Here we go. All right, so, <clears throat> so here we have, let's see if we can make this work with a microphone and all this at the same time. So what I really need you to do is plan ahead for your quotable moments. Let me make sure I snap that out. 
I planned ahead. So the idea, seriously though, I want you to plan ahead for your quotable moments. Make sure that whatever you're doing, whether it's in your blog, whether it's in a video that you do, whether it's in, even when you're periscoping, whatever it is that you're doing, think about that and think, what could I say? You're saying all this great stuff anyway, so why not take that great stuff, drop it down into a quotable moment, and make sure now that someone could take that, and what you do is you have that, someone take that, or you take it yourself, and make sure it gets out there. Plan ahead for those quotable moments. Well, the last thing I wanna talk about here, and um, I think we're good, so we'll take about another four or five minutes, and then we'll have some time for question and answer, um, is interactions involve content. And you wanna make sure that, that the content and the interaction themselves are both meaningful and memorable. So as you're developing your content, think ahead about what you're gonna do to not just have this content on multiple channels, but also to make it meaningful and memorable. And what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna give you a little example of this. And so I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna pass out some business cards to people. And when I pass out the card, if you wouldn't mind just uh, holding on to the card just kind of quietly here for a minute. I'm just gonna kind of go down the line here. So, oops, sorry, hold on to that card. Hold on to that card. Hold on to that one and, and that one and, and that one right there. And this one right here and, and this one. There you go. So, so I passed out 10 business cards. Now my guess, my guess is that there's two people who are gonna have really good memories of these, this card passing out um, experience. Raise your hand if you're one of those two people. No, there's only two. No, no, the two people who got cards, raise your hand if you're one of the ones that's really gonna have a memorable, no, really, really gonna have a memorable experience. It's, I promise it's not you. It's you, right? <laughs> right? Okay, raise it up high, let them see why they're gonna have a memorable, raise it up. There's five bucks connected to that card. Okay, they will remember who I am. Now, I'm not saying you have to go walking around with $5 stapled to your business cards. Although it's not a bad idea. Um, it, just get, it just might get kind of expensive, right? So the idea though is you create that memorable moment in the interaction and in the content that you give. You wanna make sure that you give them something that's gonna be valuable to them. This is why you want to double dip and to do it the right way. Because when you actually plan ahead your content, just like you're planning for your blog or whatever it is that you're doing, you think through this. You really think about what you want to write. And you write it with a purpose in mind. So why aren't you doing that when you do everything else? Well, you want to. So now all you have to do is write before you write that blog. You think, how would I have a quotable moment in here? How would I have a memorable experience? How could I do this and at the same time take a little portion of this and put it somewhere else? Now, it doesn't mean that we're going to walk through and as you're moving along in your blog, all of a sudden you stop and then... Quotable moment, um, but what you wanna do is you wanna make it more subtle. It's still there. You can use it for the pull quote and you can make sure that people know about it. <laughs> That's right, no. <laughs> Woo! -hoo! You get to keep that, okay. All right, so what I wanna do is I wanna have, we only have a few minutes left. Um, but um, what I want to do is open it up to questions or comments or, or even for perhaps if there are people who have had some really great experiences in actually double dipping or quadruple or triple dipping, whatever, um, your content, then I'd like to hear about that as well. And maybe we can pass the microphone around for that as well. So any questions or any people who have had some really great experiences? Okay, question and I'll go ahead and let's, let you ask it and I'll repeat it to everyone. Okay, so the question was, he has, said he has a website that's not getting as many, much attention, but he has a Facebook page that's getting a lot more attention and how to tie the two together. And I think the key here is to make sure that you have content. And, and, and so my guess is that when you're, then just to make sure I understand then, is uh, do you have similar content on both pages, on, on both platforms? Okay, similar content. And when you develop the content, do you develop for the Facebook or for the web page? All right, well, and I'll, and I'll tell you, and there may be some people here that are actually, that, uh, that will tell you all sorts of amazing tricks to get people to get into your webpage. Um, I think part of that is that maybe what, you, and, and, I, and what I don't like is, 
I don't like people to tease. I don't like the concept of, I'm here on Facebook, but if you really want to see everything, you have to go over here to my web page. I think people get annoyed by that, and I think they get annoyed fairly quickly. And so I would say it's more likely. What I would say is, you know what, it's maybe it's not so bad to have all that attention on your Facebook and not to worry about it. As long as you're getting attention, I think it's good to get the attention. Maybe in the end, that's where your attention will be. I think as you develop, sometimes you, I can think you can develop material that really isn't the same material and say, you know what, here's, this is here, maybe there is something else on, on the web page. Um, I think what it is a lot of times is how people are accessing it. Um, right now, we're, we, have a, we are living in a mobile world. And I think people have a tendency to use whatever is more mobile friendly. So hopefully your web page is very mobile friendly. And so that might be a question to take a look at. If it's not mobile friendly, then I think that might be one of the concerns. And maybe what happens is they may go there on occasion, but then they're going to bounce. And if they bounce, then they're right back. But usually I think the feeling is, is if you're in Facebook, if you're on Twitter, whatever platform, whatever channel you're on, you usually don't want to switch to something else at that moment. I know if I'm looking on Facebook, I don't feel like I want to go anywhere else. Whatever I do, I want to stay there at the moment. And when I'm done, then I'll go somewhere else. And I think that's the issue. That's a concern. It's not a very good answer for you. Yes. I'm sorry, they had their hand first. Can you yell it out? Here, here, if you make a comment, then you have to use this, sorry. <laughs> for the recording. Oh, I was going to say, sometimes it just depends on, like, the Huffington Post. Every time I read a tweet, it makes me want to read the story. The tweets are so good that it's like, I wonder what they're talking about. <laughs> so I'm, like, clicking on Huffington Post all the time. <laughs> so I think it depends on how enticing it is to get you to that website. So if you tweet out something that says, this guy looked at another person, and you can't believe what happened. Is that right? Is that, you want to pass that down? We have a bunch of us here with a local magazine company, and I was wondering if you could uh, suggest any role models in the media world for who are great at double, triple, quadruple dipping. Do you want to mention that? <laughs> BuzzFeed? Yeah, I think BuzzFeed. I, I think the idea there is, it, is because what you're trying to do is you're really trying to get them to come back to you um, and to the magazine, right? And so I think it's the same idea. You're really trying to drive your traffic to the magazine ne versus necessarily actually. What I would do is I would just understand that your magazine is no longer a magazine. It's no longer a website. Your magazine now is every single channel that you want to use. And so no longer are you a web page. You are a presence, a web presence, right? And because that would, man, that would have been an awesome quotable moment, right? No longer are you a web page, you're a web presence. Someone write that down and, and tag me in it, okay? So, um, all right, uh, maybe another question or two? Yes. Ah, beautiful, beautiful question. She's asked, she says, I listed one Snapchat up here. How do you apply that? And let me tell you, there is something about that that is much different. Um, if I do a video, like for example, the videos we just did, if I did a video and I had a camera sitting there in front of me and I did something for YouTube, and I took that little portion of it, maybe I put it onto, um, maybe onto Twitter, you know, with a 30 second uh, clip or something like that, that'd be fine. But if I have something that's say, um, you know, 90 seconds, whatever it happens to be, I would not take that and break it down into nine, 10 minute segments for Snapchat. And the reason why is because Snapchat audiences want it to be raw, right? So they don't want to be in front of a camera like this. They don't want that. What they want is for you to take, even if it's the same material, they want you to hold that camera up here and do it. So let's say that you, um, you don't really want to talk and, or you have something you want to say, you don't have it memorized very well, you want to use a teleprompter or whatever else. You know what, you can fake it. You put it on your computer screen, you take that camera, you hold that camera really, really close to the words, and then you talk right over the camera lens, and as you're talking like this, it looks like you're just talking, but you're really reading every bit of what you have. And the beautiful part is, you're only doing it in 10 second increments. And so, I mean, you could do the same thing if you actually had the camera and had someone hold the camera and you talked. Um, but I would say is you, you purposely break it down into the 10 second increments, so, or, or, or 10, 8, 7, 8, 9, 10 second increments. The reason why is because it'll look more like you did it for Snapchat. And I think that's the key. Yes. Uh, the, the idea is not linkable. Um, I think the idea there really is, and, and, that's why, and that's why I'm not a big fan of Snapchat only, 
because I, I mean, my, I have four daughters and they snap everything to me and it's like, you know, and that used to be my, that was my introduction to Snapchat. And it used to bother me when they would send me something and it was like a two second picture. I'm like, it was two seconds. They go, well, you got to see it. I'm like, but I didn't get a chance to, to screenshot it. And they're like, Dad, it's Snapchat. No one cares. I'm like, but I'm your parent. I care, right? <laughs> I, I want every single picture that you ever send to me. And so, um, so it gets frustrating for me. So the, but the truth is, I think what happens is, it's just a matter, I think, of having interaction a little bit. And um, what I would say is, follow a lot of different people on Snapchat and see what they do. And there's really a lot of different kind of um, uh, perspectives that they take. I mean, there are those people who just walk around and go like, eating breakfast, and they're doing whatever they're doing. But then there's others that actually try to lecture you every time. And there's others that just have little tidbits, and they do a few fun things. And so I think the key is to find out what that is. My guess is, I mean, now and now, if you go on to Twitter or somewhere else, more and more you're seeing that uh, Snapchat QR code type thing on there with their picture, and everybody's on there. So I think that at some point that happens. Um, you're kicking me out now? Okay, almost. Uh, <laughs> and so, um, I mean, the same thing now, things like Blab. I mean, do you go to the new format or the new platform, or do you wait and do something else? Anyway, thank you very much for the questions. Awesome. Thank you very much.